Hey friends, I'm Cass, and welcome to Uspin. Uspin is a student-led radio show produced by the people at Griffin. This piece is going to be focused on horror films released throughout 2022 and ranking my favorites of the ones that I've seen. My personal recommendations. You're so welcome. There will be some spoilers in here, just a warning, I'll be recapping the films a little bit. It's been quite the year for the horror industry, with a lot of pretty memorable movies released throughout the months. It was a big year for A24 especially, with the debut of X and its prequel Pearl, as well as the announcement of a third movie which turns the series into a trilogy. We've had additions to pre-existent franchises such as Halloween and Scream, and some really cool directors debuting for the first time. I'd say that my favorite that I've seen this year is going to have to be X, which is unfortunate because it's one of the ones that I can talk the least about on this podcast due to its mature premise. Directed by Ty West, X has some of the most incredible cinematography that I've seen in a long time. From the establishing shot of the farm through the barn doors, giving the appearance of a vintage format, to the window sequence with Maxine and Pearl, each frame was well thought out, and that led to a very gorgeous movie to watch. The villains, Pearl and Howard, are almost hard to hate despite being merciless and incredibly violent because there is something very real about them. Maybe less in their psychopathic behaviors, but the movie centers around their jealousy towards these younger characters and the potential that they still have, the lives that they still have a shot at living. Pearl sees a lot of herself in protagonist Maxine, not just because they're portrayed by the same actress, Mia Goth, who I had not heard of before this, but she is incredibly talented, but because of Maxine's certainty that she is meant to be famous and that the life she has now is not what she deserves. Pearl was once seen as beautiful and had the same desires, but she's now grown too old to be perceived as attractive, refusing her the spotlight that she was so obsessed with. It's a stunning commentary on age, self-image, and societal standards, with enough gore to qualify it as a certified slasher. I watched it with my best friend. It's not really one of those movies that haunts you in, like, the you walk into a dark room and you're convinced that Michael Myers is in the corner, but it does stick with you it's just, it's thought provoking. It's really, I don't know. I just love this movie. It's really good. I can't say I recommend it just because it is like, it it has, its premise is a lot, but it is very well done. Anyway, coming in second is Smile, which focuses on the stigma around mental health and how trauma can affect yourself and the people around you. Unlike X, the main character of Smile is haunted by a supernatural being, a grinning entity that is passed from person to person following the witness of a traumatic event. Our main character is Dr. Rose Cotter, who watches the death of one of her patients who came to her with claims of this creature. After this, the demon latches onto Rose and begins to tear her life apart. It's a fun movie in its own sense, not shot quite as rivetingly as X, but with good jump scares and solid characters. And I don't mean fun as in like, wow, what a party. I mean fun as in it's It's a good watch, keeps your attention, it's good. It makes points about the language surrounding mental health and the way that people in crisis are often received by the authorities and then their friends and family around them. With a well done twist ending and several genuinely disturbing scenes, I appreciate the way that everything included in the film helps the plot move forward and how they refrain from making things too gratuitously violent as I find that that often detracts from the original themes when they're going for something more personal. The effect of the smile itself is also really well done, as I was worried at first that it would be a kind of dumb cartoonish film with effects similar to those in Truth or Dare, but there was very little, if any, editing on the grins and smile, which was just enough to make them uncomfortable and uncanny, but not unbelievable, if that makes sense. It does have some pretty dark themes, and it's successful at what it was trying to do. Third up is Prey, which I don't have quite as much to say about, but it was just a really cool movie. A part of the Predator franchise, which I have admittedly not seen, it follows a Comanche warrior and her fight against the alien that's hunting the people and the animals in the area. Despite the doubts from those around her about her abilities as a tracker and a hunter, she's incredibly skilled and all of the fight scenes in this film are so well choreographed and shot that it's insane. Huge props to Dan Trachtenberg and Kendall Elliott for their directing work on this movie and Jeff Cutter for his work in cinematography because it's so pretty. I'm going to highly recommend this to anyone who's not a huge fan of horror and prefers more action and suspense, but with like a little scare factor. I'm not a major action movie fan, but Prey was done well enough that I was able to sit through the entire thing and I was so invested by the halfway point. The interactions in this movie are believable and the the predator itself is really frustrating because it is so overly powerful that 
you want her to win, but it's kind of discouraging because it seems to have every defense mechanism known to man. And it's, I don't know, it was just a gorgeous, it was such a good movie. It was really fun. Fourth would be Scream 5, which is simply titled Scream and follows Tara and Sam Carpenter, who are being followed by the infamous ghost face. Back to pick off legacy characters where they can, it's a pretty classic slasher in a series of classic slashers. Its predictable plot is completely saved by the incredible acting performances delivered by the cast, particularly Jenna Ortega, starring as Tara, our cold open girl who turns out to be crazy tough and she ended up as my favorite. She's the next best thing to having Sidney Prescott back as our main. The perfect balance of suspense and gore, Scream did justice for the original and made me less critical of Scream 4. <laughs> At least it led to something good. My final recommendation for this year's crop of horror films is any movie that wasn't the Requin. I don't know how to pronounce it because it's French, but it's bad. It doesn't deserve me learning how to pronounce it. Look, I love a good shark movie. I love a bad shark movie. Don't get me wrong, but this was barely a shark movie. My standards are so low when it comes to these kind of films. I watched Toxic Shark without complaint and I enjoyed it. That's not an easy task. But in this movie, the shark doesn't even show up until you're super bored. And at that point, you just want the characters to die because they make the worst decisions and are honest to God, the most annoying people I have ever watched on screen. They aren't even well acted. The plot is effectively non-existent. The shark is goofy. And please do not watch this movie because I love you. And I think you have better things to do with your time. Do you remember the Requin with the one with Alicia Silverstone and they're in the- Oh, Requin. Wait, R E Q U I N. Yeah. Yeah, it's the one with the shark and they're oh like, my in God, the- that was terrible. <laughs> no, there was no way any of that would ever have happened ever. And then why would you set a fire on a raft? A wooden raft and you set a fire. It's your only means of floating away from a big, massive person eating shark. I like the part where he was like only a torso and he was still alive. So much worse than hanging on to the door in Titanic when she was still trying to keep him alive. She was doing her best. She was was, interesting. But seriously, this year had a bunch of really good movies, including Terrifier 2, Nope, Jordan Peele, I adore your work, Bodies, 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 which is kind of difficult to call good, but I liked watching it, and Choose or Die. Choose or Die was just actually bad, but dear heavens do I love it, and I try to show it to anyone and everyone that sits down for a movie night with me. We still have another month left to get some holiday-themed haunts, and I look forward to what 2023 brings. Unless it's another shark movie with Alicia Silverstone, in which case you may never hear from me again because I will stop consuming all media. No recommend sequels.